Uh, with 15 minutes to go to give Aston Villa a surprising point. Of course, with it being Manchester City, uh, Jan Ogafjortov was there. The Let's see, is Jan in front of a hotel room? Uh, <laughs> let, let's see if we can see him. <laughs> Just connecting. <laughs> Paid for the extra. There he is. Hey, oh, yes. The man knows more about fire escapes from hotel than anyone else. Uh, Jan, looking at it, what went wrong with City today? Well, first of all, you should congratulate me today because I followed Erling Haaland so long now in so many hotels room that we published uh, a via play. We published a documentary today, this morning. So uh, it paid off to be all these hotel rooms. But you know, Dan, a lot of things didn't... It wasn't so bad. I mean, Manchester City was good. Uh, in the first half, there was not the, the usual balance, the timing in the play, but they created a lot, a lot of chances. To be fair, respect to Aston Villa, they tr th th I guess they were, they were working hard and doing all they can to kind of stop Manchester City. But the funny thing is, after Erling Haaland scored his 10th goal in six games, and by that equalising, our friend Mickey Quinn, who is, I think, the total opposite striker, <laughs> because he was smaller and fattier, uh, uh, Mickey Quinn was back in the days, but what a goal-getter he was. The thing is, that when they... <laughs> They should kill off the game. They created three or four big, big chances. Uh, and uh, then Leon Bailey came. But it, this is, of course, the De Bruyne, Erling Haaland thing. That is Lennon McCartney of football. I mean, they understand everything from each other. And then he made that 1-0. But they came out, come out in the second half then. They created so many chances. And just in the middle of that, Leon Bailey scored a fantastic goal. Mm. I spoke to him after the game and he just had that feeling. Frank and Stevie and Don will know. You know that feeling when you just touch the ball and you know, you don't have to see where the ball goes. You know this is a goal. And that's what it did. And to be fair to Aston Villa, they held on through a fantastic atmosphere at Villa Park. They held on to that point and Steven Gerrard, of course, seeing that as a kickoff to the season because I think that that was a, a great, great point for them. And it's, it's, it's the funny thing is that you can go into the dressing room and tell the boys, well, when you can do that against Manchester City, maybe we can do it in some other games, but, but City should have won this game. And uh, I understand why Pep Guardiola was a bit depressed after the game because that typical Manchester City of balance and timing was not there, at least not in the first half. Uh, Jan, I feel like we need to ask you another question, but you pretty much summed up everything. But as your winner, anything else you'd like to bring up? No, I just, I, I just wanted to uh, summarise that game because it's easy to see when, when Manchester City goes to Villa Park and play 1-1, you think they had a very bad game. They didn't. I think sometimes we just have to ha hold your hands up and say also to, to Aston Villa, that was, a, I won't say a deserved point, but I, I'm... A, I'm a quite old-fashioned guy, so I say when you take a point, you deserve your point because that was the end result. But City had enough chances for three or four games, so uh, so uh, don't you worry. They don't have the machine problem, as Stevie uh, said at Liverpool at the moment. Manchester City will just march on. Well, thank you very much for watching ESPN on YouTube. For more sports highlights and analysis, be sure to download the ESPN app. And for live streaming, premium content, and let's not forget as well, ESPN FC, seven days a week. Subscribe to ESPN+. Plus.